Is it time to change your anchor road? We'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to splice new line to an anchor chain. This video is by Captain Rob, who holds a 200-ton master's license and charters his 41-foot sailboat Bay Poet out of Rock Hall on the Chesapeake Bay. Captain Rob also contributes many valuable how-to articles and videos to My Boat Life. Hi, Captain Rob here, coming to you from my home workshop today. During the season, I noticed that the chain links in my anchor road were starting to rust and show signs of their age. They're probably the original anchor road from the original owner from 24 years ago. So it's time. So I have 50 feet of chain here and 150 feet of three strand nylon. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to bend the two together using splicing techniques. I'll show you the tools I'm using. I'll show you how I've laid it out here in my workshop to make it easy for me to work on. And hopefully you can learn a few things and maybe save yourself some cost at the rigger shop when it's time to change your anchor road. All right, so let's get started. There are a few basic things that you need here. Obviously, you're going to need your anchor chain, which I have here on my workbench. I'm using a C-clamp to lock it down so it can't go falling off the edge of the table. I've got my three strand line. In this case, it's 5 8 inch. My chain is 5 16 inch. You can see that I've unraveled three of the, the three strands here to make it easy to splice back. I've also used a whipping here on the line to keep it from unraveling any further. You probably want to have a razor knife for cutting, maybe a little pair of cutters for getting rid of the whipping when you're done and of course some whipping line or you could use tape if you wanted to as you can see i've taped the end of the strands and while it's not absolutely necessary you might also want to have a fid to use while you're splicing and you'll see how we use that as we go through this process all right so let's begin see i've got my 5 16 inch chain laid out here on the work table I've got it clamped down with a C clamp here on the end of the table so it doesn't fall off. And the other, the three strand line rolls off the other end of the table. Now I have unraveled the three strands in the three strand line and I've got a little line here to keep it from unraveling any further. So the first step in this process is to actually bend the three strands to the chain. So we're going to start by taking the middle strand here as it's laid out and putting that through the top of the chain link. Then we're going to take the outer two strands and feed them through from underneath. So we've got one strand going in, two strands coming out. Now we want to snug those down keeping their orientation down to the place where we have the little twine holding the line from unraveling further. And you want to get it snugged in there pretty tightly. Just as far as it can go. Take up all the slack. Okay, now we're in there pretty tightly. So in this process, you want to every once in a while put the twist back in the strands so that they keep their shape and don't get too unraveled like this. You want to keep them nice and neat so when you do your actual splicing back into the line, it stays the shape that you want. So now we're ready to start tucking. Like any other three strand splice, the method is over one strand and under the next. So before we begin, I'm going to cut away the little whipping right here with the small cutters. If you have a good sharp knife, that would work too. Once I have enough cut away, I can get under there with a pair of scissors and cut that off. Okay. Now, again, 
we want to take it up nice and tight. <clears throat> okay, now we can begin tucking. So here's our first strand. We're going to go over one and under one. And again, as you do this, make sure you keep the twist in the strand so it stays neat. All right. Now we take the next one. We go over one and then under one. So here we go. Again, put some twist in this to keep it nice and neat. Keep the, the part that's going around the chain link nice and neat. Now we gotta turn this over. We're gonna go over one and then under one. Twisting the strand to keep it neat. All right, we wanna cinch down on all three of these lines. Now, take note here how when you're done with each tuck, the lines pretty much are in the same place and they're symmetrical about the line. You wanna remember that symmetry because that's how it should stay throughout the entire splicing process. So let's continue. Now, you might say, why would I use the fid? In this soft nylon, you probably don't need to, but on bigger lines, you might find it helpful. So we've gone over one, and here's our under one. We put the fit in, concave side up, and then we just pass the line through, pull the fit out, and there's our tuck. Just as easy. However, like I said, this line is mighty soft, so we really don't need to do that. We're gonna go over one, under one. Cleaning up the strand after we have done the tuck. Come over here. We go over one and under one. Now that's two tucks. We're gonna go at least two more. That is when you do this, especially on this size line, you wanna have at least four full tucks in this in this process. And every once in a while, you might wanna roll that splice in your hand just to keep it nice and even and smooth. And so here we go again, over one, under one. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go right ahead and finish these two tucks. And then I'll show you how we're gonna finish this off. Over one and under one. And over one. Actually, let me clean this up a little bit because the strands are getting a little raggedy here. And we want to keep it nice and neat. Nice and neat. Okay. And then tighten up this strand. I'm gonna go over one and under one. Okay. Again, nice and symmetrical. Neaten up the strands. Okay. One more tuck for all three. Over one. Under one. Again, you wanna try and keep the strands as in line and as neat as you can. It's a little tricky, but 
but you do the best you can over one and under one. Okay. And over one and don't get confused because the under one is buried down in here amongst the two we've already tucked. Okay, and we twist out the strands to make sure they're nice and neat. Okay, now, so basically there's our splice to the chain. If you look at it, this part of the splice is not much wider than the chain itself. So, so far so good. But we don't wanna have a clunky splice just ending right here with kind of a step in the line. All right, let's talk about how we're gonna finish these. What you could do is take a pair of scissors and cut a few strands out of each, few threads I should say, out of each strand and continue to tuck until you've exhausted the, st the threads and the strand, you've got a nice long taper. The other option you have is now that we've finished our full three tucks, now we will take this one and over one, under one, and then we will take this one and go over one and under one. Again, always keeping your strands nice and neat, the little twist. We're done with these two. One more tuck on this last one we just did. Over one and under one. Okay, neaten up the strand. All right, neaten up the strands. And now when you lay this down, you'll notice that they're all coming out on the same side, each one a little shorter because it's been tucked an additional time and we've tapered down the line. Now what you can do at this point is if you have a hot knife, you're even better off. You can take your hot knife and cut off the strands or what you can also do is to cut off these ends, perhaps tape them in a tight twist and then seal off the lines with a torch or some other hot means of splicing. So that's it. We have spliced 5 8 3 strand nylon onto 5 16 inch chain. All that's left now is to take all this to the boat, secure the bitter end of the chain to the anchor with two shackles, and then take the bitter end of the nylon line and secure that to the boat. And that is how you splice your anchor road. Hope you like this video and subscribe for more from My Boat Life.